Hello my beautiful co-creators, Lulu here and I'm in Colorado with amazing juicy Malcolm. <laughs> it's so good to see you. It's nice to meet you, nice to have you here. Thank you, thank you. You are so inspiring and so creative and, oh, and such you. a thank conduit you. for something amazing and divine to take place on oh, this. Cool. On I this use, place. I happens, use the word here? garden hose. You uh -huh. know, all we do is screw ourselves into that ever abundant source of energy, source of spirituality, and just go. My, my biggest thing is, you know, as you progress through your career is, you know, it goes from an ego thing to now it's just get out of the way and let God go through me, you know? There's mm. no, yeah. he, he has a plan, I have a plan, and let's see if we can get it done together, right? But I like to joke about this because you look more like a uh, American footballer than a painter. So tell us about this journey because you were actually a, a, a football player. Yeah, I American was, football. yeah. Um, you know, it kind of all the way, all through my life growing up was kind of a, a battle between sports and art, sports and art. And my, my parents were very anti the athletic route and they kept pushing me into the music and sport or music and art. And so, you know, after college, you know, I didn't get drafted as high <laughs> as I wanted to. And by then I was already starting to experience that inner, the inner peace, that inner drive, that inner just, oh, just that contentment, you know, that Zen that you get in when you paint. And I didn't want to give it up, you know, and I was always starting to make a good living. And I realized, hey, this is really what I'm supposed to be doing. The other was just kind of a platform to get me there. And, you know, all the training, all the goal setting, all that kind of stuff that comes from sports, I've kind of just taken that into the art field. You know, it's kind of like get up in the morning, set a goal, get it done and do it. So. Because I heard it was pretty impressive when people see you um, painting, oh, painting this, the yeah. energy that you're moving. Again, it's just one of those things I just, you know, my whole story began with live on stage with Carlos Santana in Las Vegas in front of about 120,000 people. And it was an MTV audience. And I thought that they wanted me to come and do the poster. And then I thought, no, they want me to come out and just paint him. I didn't know they wanted me on stage. So I had 90 minutes to do the portrait. And it was kind of like I'd never really done it before. And it was kind of like... You know, that's what I'm talking about. There's where, in my opinion anyway, the um, athletic training and confidence, inner confidence comes. And, before, you know, you just have to check out, get out of the way, and as they say, let God come through. Mm. And so in 90 minutes, the portrait of Carlos was done in front of 120,000 screaming fans, and it was, I was hooked. From then on to live painting on stage with How much adrenaline was oh, flowing on your body. Oh, huge! <laughs> and the cool part about it is Carlos is a very spiritual guy. We went back, back to his trailer and talked for like five hours all about reincarnation and his spiritual Ooh. journey coming from a Catholic background, and it was pretty incredible. Was mm. So, how did you then? Because you you have painting some amazing artists oh, like Stevie Wonder. I mean, how did this came about? Um, right after this Carlos? was well, no, this this the Carlos thing started a whole progression of things, and then the Grammys and the Music Care Foundation kind of thing. This was a fundraiser in L.A. a few years ago where he was accepting some humanitarian award for his for his work, and you know he was accepting the award and he was giving thanks and it was feeling definitely definitely filled with gratitude, and then the back curtain just opened up and there was his band. He just he just went right into my sherry amor mm. and all oh, the crowd went crazy and three-hour concert took place so that's where this painting came from mm. so again though backstage afterwards what a spiritual wonderful talk about open conduit wow yeah. <laughs> after the event uh he his manager brought him over and he was gracious enough to sign it for me so it's part of that's like the foremost piece in my collection you know i've always been a stevie wonder fan being a musician mm -hmm. myself and growing up and just Imagine what goes through, has gone through his whole process as he was, what, 12 years old? Just amazing. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, it's very alive. I love all the colors and how they're distributed. Well, it's and it's just, know, it just... It just comes out of me. It's quick. You know, that was about, that was about a two or three hour piece. So that had a little more That's time. That's it? Yeah. It's, I get the spatula out, the drywall knife, and just get going on it, you know? And you got to realize there are no mistakes. In something like this, there are mo no mistakes. You just paint right over it, keep going, and you know you can't <laughs> you can't sit around and w wonder if you're doing the right thing. You know, it just has to be totally um, inspired, and uh, you know. Yeah, that's how it feels. And Bono too. Oh yeah, talk about a oh. wow. You know, you don't even need to say anymore what he's doing for the world right now through his music, and through you know his just the way he's living his life. You know, what an amazing, amazing human being.
Yeah. Yeah. Love, love, love. Oh, pure love. Pure love. Yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Gorbachev. And Mr. Gorbachev, one of the, this may have been, well, there's been some wonderful, wonderful things in my career, but being on stage with him, mm -hmm. and this was quite a while ago. This was probably 10 years ago, eight years ago. So, you know, just imagining what he has gone through in, in wow, behind what closed doors, what information, what were they, you know, what were they thinking, you know? And then to see him just totally, wow, <coughs> kind of unite everything through separation, you know, however you want to word it, but wonderful, wonderful. And just whew, charismatic, just through his interpreter, we talked all about the use of color and you want to know about my kids and, you know, it was just cool. So how much do you have to know about them before doing the painting? Or no, that it just really, is not it important? Really, it, it, sometimes it's not important, but sometimes it is. I mean, I read a lot about him before we painted this, because I, I was got to admit, I was very, very intimidated this time. You know? <laughs> this was like one of those, what am I doing up here with somebody like this? And, you know, I didn't want to do just another, another typical portrait. You know, he wanted, they said they wanted my contemporary color, my, and they wanted an American's viewpoint of Mikel. So that's what they got. <laughs> and he enjoyed it. He thoroughly enjoyed it. In fact, he, he got a copy of it. So um. so how do you do this? Do you set an intention when you're ready to paint like that? Do you, which, which space do you get into? What is the moment where you tip into something very creative and open channel? Um, you know, I meditate a lot. And not, I'm not saying I meditate, but you kind of learn different. I have like gimmick tricks kind of thing where I just have to check out. A lot of times it's kind of a humming. It's like inner humming. It's like... Oh, you, what's that kid's baseball movie where the pitcher starts singing, you know, to get in the groove? I can't, it's a Walt Disney movie. But anyway, you know, it's just, and then you just go and you just kind of wait for that moment to just, all of a sudden, you go kind of go deaf on each side and you're focused on that, you know, and then they kind of, you kind of come back when you know it's finished. And so you're kind of asleep, but not yeah. asleep, but you're, you're in a trance mm -hmm, kind of state I'd and then you wake so. up from it and you're yeah. like, whoa, is that? Yeah, pretty much. Because it has to be instinctual. I mean, you don't really think about and when you put colors together juxtapositional colors you know complementary colors light and dark whatever you know it comes from training it's like doing scales if you're a piano player you spend years and years doing scales da, 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 da. but then once you get to that point where it becomes you and spirit takes over then you're out of the way and all that training which just takes care of our physical our hands um, kind of that's when it's all that training steps in but and you know when I teach classes, people, you know, I don't teach painting the traditional way. I get kids to use whatever instrument they want to use. I want them to stand back away from the canvas. I want it more gestural. I want it not, you know, just moving your fingers. I want it, you know, total expression uh, with the body and that sort of thing. So mm. it's totally instinctive. Um, yeah. People ask me how and why. I don't really know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So what? What? Why these? Why these artists and, um, and famous people versus? You know, when you else? talk about spirituality, and you know, you and I were just talking about celebrities that attain either through experimentation or attain some sort of level where they're, you know, openly talking, discussing about their spiritual path. Who more than the Beatles? I mean, wow! Did that totally bring that whole Eastern Indian philosophy and influence? into our country, into our culture, what they all did. And I, you know, it's just such great, iconic imagery anyway. You know, I just, I'm doing these, a series uh, for a publisher too, so. And then Led Zeppelin just came from an, <laughs> another live on stage performance where, you know, I mean, when he's in that pose, you're not telling me he's just not check, checked out. I mean. Or checked in. Checked in, checked out. <laughs> I mean, Carlos always used to, kind of look through the heavens, so to speak, in his terminology, and wait for the angels, invite the angels to come through him. And you can literally, I was on stage with him for probably seven, six, seven, eight concerts. And after I knew that, you could actually tell when he was out of the way, you know? Yeah. I mean, everybody has their own terminology, their own belief system, but everybody, even athletes, you know, the same thing. Once they get in that zone or whatever. And that's kind of why I kept painting all the, the athletes and that sort of thing, because I was always really, because I know myself when I played, not to that level of, you know, like a Joe Montana or anything, but you know, once they get in that zone, they don't know what's going on. Yeah. It, becomes a, it becomes a totally quiet world. All they see is the receiver breaking open. All they know is to get it there. I mean, same here. I mean, 
Yeah, like like I know you painted Pete Sampras too. I mean, mm -hmm. tennis players they don't see the no. the ball coming at no. them in the same way than we no. see it. No, <laughs> no, Pete. I actually have done a lot with Pete. Know him very well. He's he's one of the biggest ones that um, says, you know, I'm not really a real spiritual guy. I say, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. I mean, he's wow. The difference of hearing him hit the ball live on the you know I painted at the U.S. Open live on the court, and the difference the sound of the ball when he hits it versus anybody else, and it's just. Oh, you have to be to be able to move that fast, that instinctively. You have to be. That's that's what I'm. You know, we we are nothing but flesh and bones, except for the spirit that drives us, right? Mm. And he's well. But we we a lot of uh, a lot of people have forgotten that life force. Oh, yeah. or just oh we all forget it here and there throughout our lives too. There's times when we all wonder why our, is our life kind of like stagnating or sliding or whatever you want to call it, and it's because we're out of. We're out of whack, out yeah. of sync. So how did you transition from painting those famous people to now painting someone or somebody <laughs> or an somebody. avatar like yeah, Buddha? Exactly. How did that happen? Well, um, I grew up overseas uh, in India, and I taught in China for a while. So I've always been really thrilled by this, the imagery, you know, and also the spirituality. And I was um, fortunate enough to be, you know, we meditated in ashrams at 13 in India. And I, you know, my father taught in China, and I went to... Uh, a couple monasteries with them and ate with the monks, you know, and so it just, you know, and I was already on a spiritual pathway anyway, and then my father passed away a few years ago, and that really, really drove me, drove me to, you know, that's one thing he said kind of before, we used to have these great chats over coffee, and he said, you know, your sports stuff is wonderful, your music stuff is wonderful, but you're just painting pretty pictures recording history. Do something from your heart, do something from your soul, and so then it just, this whole thing came about my childhood in India and all the imagery. And then as, you know, there's going to be a progression, as you'll see, a more meditative um, watercolor translucent style that has many layers, which is purely meditation itself because it's like slow building up of the colors, you know, 20, 30 washes versus this kind of stuff, which is like, and I, I, I love a contemporary look on, a, an ancient, on ancient wisdom. And that's kind of where I'm really going now is, you know, there's a lot of wonderful um, imagery out there through the Oriental um, philosophy, Buddhism, and through the Eastern Indian philosophy, and, and you know, Christianity, too. Mm. So it's not so much about religion, huh? Well, it's, you know, religion, that's that word that always scares me. It's spirituality to me. But, you know, I grew up, you know, yeah, it's, it's more about just finding something. You know, my whole idea is with the art, is you know when you the human mind when it stops to look at something it changes the energy of the person watching it right mm -hmm. and so if everybody everybody on the planet stops to look at a painting for 30 seconds they'll have one of those experiences where they're just you know they're in that zen they're re, they're um, radiating beauty and um, tranquility and I think if you know, if there's enough art on the walls, people, you'll help change the energy of, of the world. That's kind of my philosophy. Mm, and I, I love that you use uh, gold. And the gold is such a regal, rich, yeah, I mean, it's just the gold, yeah. It's really been kind of fun, you know. A lot of textural stuff. This comes from uh, some of the things I saw in China, mm -hmm. you know. And, you know, the, horse, the horses have a spirituality. They have a... You know, they played a major role throughout history, you know. Yeah. And what about this one? This one is my little guy. This is, I have a one-year-old son mm -hmm. that, um, you know, my wife is Jamaican. And he, you know, we're all, we both have some Oriental in us. And this actually, this is, um, remember you're a beautiful child. Or, yeah, that's, it's a name of a song that um, a very good friend of mine wrote. And so we needed something, um some imagery and that came one morning he was laying in bed and I just took a picture and then tilted it upright and he looks very much like Booty, has very oriental eyes and a little pouty mouth and so mm, I love this. yeah that's kind of the thought process you know kind of the that zing the spark yep the spark ah, <laughs> the juice as you would call it yeah the yeah. juice because these are very juicy this what tell us about this one this is Krishna kind of the song of love um, this comes from my my time in India you know, Krishna and just, it's a really fascinating um, oh, piece of history and also just what it stands for and, you know, use of the gold leaf again 
you know, I saw a lot of these murals on the walls in Agenta and Alora, the caves and that sort of thing, and it just came from that. And that's really, it's more of a spiritual, pretty picture piece. You know, it doesn't have any huge meaning. So how do you, how do you, I mean, are these all phases mm -hmm. throughout? Because here we're actually at Mile Hill Church here in Colorado. So mm -hmm. you're exposing here. You're not, mm -hmm. this is not always exposed here. No, no. I had a little gallery yeah. here um, for a while. But this is, this is a show that will probably travel. Right now it's already, I'm um, in discussions, it's already being booked for Harlem in New York. I was out there th um, about three weeks ago kind of doing the initial thing. And I think that. You know, to take this to places where there's groups of various cultures, I think it's kind of cool because I think there's something here for everybody. I think it's going to speak to everybody. I don't care race, greed, color, you know, economic, whatever. It's kind of, doesn't matter your demographics, it's going to hopefully speak to you. So, yeah, there are different phases here. There's different phases right now, like we're entering this whole prayer. This is real soft. Yeah, and this is a, this is a series when my dad passed away. That, he really affected me. He adopted me into the world. I was just fortunate enough to have been around the world several times by the time I was 16. I've seen, I've been to every continent basically. And so I came up with this, what I'm calling the World Prayer Series. And it's, as you'll see as we go along here, it's maybe it's focusing on Buddha right now, but just different um, cultures and different people in the act of communing with a higher, their higher um, God, whatever you want to call it, you know? So. Expressing their spirituality, so I'm calling it the World Prayer Series, and it's basically or a gratitude series. That's a better way to put it. I mean, um, yeah, because you know, gratitude and prayer is really the yeah, it's similar but different. Yeah, so but it has that communion with that energy yeah, that we all connect. With, with. That's correct. That's correct. And this is more manifest manifestation kind of a thing. This is when you're in that zone and you're manifesting an idea, and this is kind of more or less the seed of the idea coming into fruition. Yeah, that's what that one's so about. So do you feel like you're, when you're doing this, do you feel like you're communicating with Buddha or that you feel its energy? Um, and how does that feel? Not necessarily with Buddha, but maybe the teachings of Buddha, more or less. It's more, it's more um, becoming one, becoming ethereal, becoming weightless, you know? I mean, that's kind of what we're all, and I think, anyway, is when you reach that, that highest level where you really are just ethereal. You're just a spirit, you know, just floating. You have no walls. You know, your spirit, and I really felt this when my father passed away. He actually, everyone left the room, and he actually was there, and, you know, I was holding his hand, talking, and he just went, and I felt it whoosh, whoosh, out the top of my head. Mm -hmm. And I actually, to, to be honest, I feel him more now than he was here. And it's really, so it's all what, we, you know, we're, we are spirits that are renting these bodies in this lifetime, and that's kind of, so what I was after is, I'm getting chills right now. <laughs> but no, you know what I'm talking about. When you, when you achieve, and we, at least me, um, I have times where I'm really in tune, a period of two or three months, you know, where, wow, you're just there. And then all of a sudden, ka-ching, ka-ching, slip, bang. You know, wheels fall off, and hey, you're a human being again, and I got, you know. Anyway, but it's when you get back into that, wow. You know, and I remember in... You know, we lived in northern India, and we had a huge Tibetan colony mm. that, you know, had fled Tibet to live in India, but we were only a few miles from Tibet. And just the, just the old women in the morning and the, in the evening, just, you know, rubbing that prayer wheel and chanting. And we used to walk, oh, hours and hours through the villages listening to that. It was just an incredible thing to do when you're 14 years old. It'll kind of change your life a little bit. Wow, what a, yes. And how about here? The, and this is this is more, corn? Yeah, this is, I currently uh, live in Puerto Varta a lot of the year, the winter months. And I, I really got, I was just intrigued again by living amongst a different culture and the spirituality of, you know, maybe the Mayan and Aztec kind of thing where things, where their gratitude came revolved around the harvest. I mean, you know, so here this is, the, I call this the corn maiden. And their gratitude was giving thanks for the season, a good season. And, you know, they use the corn for all sorts of things, clothing, food, uh, you know, feeding the animals, that kind of thing. Yeah. And then this, this is actually something I saw, not exactly in this way, but going back to being in India, we used to kind of sneak out and go sit in the monasteries up in northern India and in Nepal. And this was something 
a vision I saw of a monk praying at sunset, and it's something I'll never forget. And this is, this is just my interpretation, design-wise, of what I saw. This one's real powerful for this me. It's amazing how you're blending to the energy with mm -hmm. the nature, and all is becoming one through this painting. Yeah. We can feel it. You know, it's just the flow. Yep. You know, it's all, and it, it's, they, they, that's kind of what I'm trying to get through all these. It's like flow up into the focal point, and the focal point is always light, which is spirituality, you know. And this is, uh, oh, probably more Persian, more, um, you know, Western India into Pakistan. I spent some time there. Um, you know, the nose ring, and this is another... You know, the blue is a sign of spirituality in, in Hindu religion. Just something I saw that I had mm -hmm. to paint. <laughs> yeah, so you, do you take pictures sometimes yes. and then you go and back actually, and... A lot of these are my father's pictures, too. He was a oh, very, very good photographer. He left me his whole inventory of photography, of photographs. So that was really... Mm. That's why it's kind of... So special. you could tap into his yes. energy when yeah. you're doing yeah. it and asking him to guide you also, I guess. Yeah, that's very true. And this is actually my wife and, you know, just kind of a rendition of more the Caribbean, Polynesian kind of feel, you know, the garb. And again, the lotus, lotus to me is, is the life thing. It's like the flower blossoming. It's like, again, you, you plant the seed and it comes to fruition. So that's... Do that's you find it's it easier to do it with somebody that you met than somebody that you haven't met to paint them? Probably, yeah, definitely. Room. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah. Uh -huh. otherwise, I think it just becomes a pretty picture. Yeah, I, I use that a lot, but oh, sometimes I just think I'd rather have a photograph, you know, and that's why there are photographers around. But these, this these series are, yeah. is, is spectacular. Is that where you're at right now? Mm -hmm. this, is, this is where I'm at. This is empowerment. This is like when you have the flow coming through you. This is, and I use the kind of the metamorphosis of the butterfly of light coming out of the, out of the cocoon and, you know, that kind of a thing. And when you just reach up there in kind of a kingly regal kind of a headdress you know implied up there plus this is fun this is the gestural the use of the palette knights knife and you know the energy that exudes from it is what i'm after you know when you say you take a day to do those or not even well you know yeah it's you know the thought process is a long time maybe <laughs> yeah. but you know when it's right it's right and you just go and this is uh this is a painting entitled Walk More Softly. Jock Bartley from Firefall fame um, wrote a song that's kind of in a program to help kids um, in the school system kind of feel like they're responsible for their lives and also the earth. So, you know, I kind of chose the American Indian and their respect for the earth and, you know, manifesting the spirits and the nature from the earth as they walk through. He's flying. He's, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a dance, a ceremonial dance. And this is enlightenment. Again, I use that source of light where it, it comes from an idea and manifests. And this is kind of just opening up to the heavens or to the inner and just letting it go. This is our job, really, huh? huh? Letting it go. <laughs> our job. That's it. That's the thing. <laughs> and this one is this just one. a pure beauty. This oh. one, um, this is more of an ancestral thing. Um, here's, you know, it's kind of the, it's kind of a dance of a culture, and maybe this one dancing and celebrating on on this earthly plane, and yet there's another, you know, daughter or something, a son coming along. That's kind of what this one's about. Or even a guardian. Yeah, a guardian angel. Just another maybe twin spirit kind mm -hmm. of thing if you believe in everyone has a twin flame kind of a thing, yeah. This was purely an inspiration. I don't know. That's why I'm having a little bit of trouble explaining it because <laughs> it just came out, you know. Uh, that must blow your mind. I mean, how does mm -hmm. the ego react? Do you have those moments where the ego is just like, oh, my God, you, ident you start identifying with it because well, it's hard. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. I just think... Um, the, the best thing I can say is I became a much better artist when my ego really went away, you know. Before it was all about, wow, man, I'm really cool. I'm on the Super Bowl sidelines. I'm painting this and that. And, wow, aren't I good? And then you start realizing that, you know, it's not me. <laughs> like, I go back to the garden hose thing. You know, I'm just this physical being on this planet that has chosen or was chosen, however you want to look at it, to be 
you know, an outlet for this kind of energy, this kind of um, influence, this kind of, hopefully it affects, you know, life on this planet, you know, leads us towards a more spiritual base kind of a thing. So, you know, art's very powerful, just like music. And I think that, you know, the thing about music, um, you know, you have to hear it where, you know, you just can't keep playing the same song all the time, where art is on your wall. And it's been really, really wonderful to have people come in this sanctuary here and really literally pull up a chair and just sit for half an hour, an hour. And I know that they're probably getting more out of it that was intended, but that's what it's supposed to be. You know, it's supposed to inspire someone to go in that direction. And what they do with that direction is their own unique experience, you know. It's healing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully there's some healing going on, yeah. Uh, so what is for you, tell us, what is a juicy life? What is living a juicy life for you? What is that juice? Right now it's, it's my little one-year-old son mm -hmm. who's walking, who's paint, and he paints with me. He literally, and this is, I'm not embellishing this story, in about ten and a half months, you know, I was talking to my wife the other day, it's like, it was so cool. He gets up and he just comes over and starts painting and loves it. He knows all the paintings. He knows when I bring a new painting in the house. He goes up, he can't quite talk yet. But he's just all over. He'll get up in the morning and run into the studio and grab his brush and just start painting. I mean, it's, that's juicy. If you want to he ask me what my version of juicy was, that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, to sit there and, you know, again, then here, this is a lot of the part of parking the ego back behind you somewhere. Now, if I get to wake up, enjoy the beauty of nature, enjoy him, enjoy a great meal at the end of a day, um, get to paint during the day and have some sort of spiritual, like this today. This is a highlight for me today. This is Juicy Living, talking about spirituality and my expression through my art. That's about as juicy as it gets. <laughs> so what little last piece of advice would you have for people watching this right now and that really want to unleash also or connect to the divine and let it flow through them, whatever it can look like for them? Well, my, you know, again, and I've said this probably 10 times throughout this whole interview, is just get out of the way. You know, don't be intimidated. I, you know, whenever I teach, it's just like every, there's no right or wrong. That's the thing I'm trying to get. You know, we all have to work through that. You know, you're not, well, there's some extreme, you know, <laughs> examples of wrong, but you know, it's just that we all have a, a divine imprint of, I believe anyway, of what, what kind of direction we're supposed to go and just get out of the way and trust that you know, you're not going to be let down. As they would say, God's got your back, you know. So, that's it. Thank juicy, you. Juicy. You are very juicy. <laughs> Isn't he you. juicy? Isn't that yeah. awesome? I mean, isn't, how cool fun, is that? Fun. This and it's very cool what you're doing. Going around the country, the world. Thank you. This is, what, this is the kind of thing that changes the consciousness and the energy of the world, you know. People see this. I don't know how many people are going to see this, but they're going to tell their friends, you know, it's kind of that social media thing. It's just like, wow. Mm. That's what's going to save us. Mm. Yep. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, let's be together on okay. that journey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> much love, my beautiful co-creators yep. from Colorado. Yay. Bye. Bye, -bye. Ah, juicy. <laughs>
Yeah. He, he has a plan, I have a plan, and let's see if we can get it done together, right? But I like to joke about this because you look more like a uh, American footballer than a painter. So tell us about this journey because you were actually a, a football player. Yeah, American I was. Football. Yeah. Um, you know, it kind of all the way, all through my life growing up was kind of a, a battle between sports and art, sports and art. And my, my parents were very anti the athletic route and they kept pushing me into the music and sport or music and art. And so. You know, after college, you know, I didn't get drafted as high as I wanted to. And by then I was already starting to experience that inner, that inner peace, that inner drive, that inner... Hello, my beautiful co-creators, Lilu here, and I'm in Colorado with amazing, juicy Malcolm. It's so good to see you. It's nice to meet you. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. You are so inspiring and so creative and, oh, and such you. a thank conduit you. for something amazing and divine to take place on oh, this. Cool. On I this use, place. I use the word here? garden hose. You uh -huh. know, all we do is screw ourselves into that ever abundant source of energy, source of spirituality, and just go. My, my biggest thing is, you know, as you progress through your career is, you know, it goes from an ego thing to now it's just get out of the way and let God change. <laughs> and the cool part about it is Carlos is a very spiritual guy. We went back, back to his trailer and talked for like five hours all about reincarnation and his spiritual oh. journey coming from a Catholic background and it's pretty incredible. Mm. Wow. So how did you then, because you, you have painting some amazing artists oh, like Stevie Wonder. I mean, how did this came about? Um, right after this Carlos? Was, well, no, this, this, the Carlos thing started a whole progression of things and then the Grammys and the Music Care Foundation kind of thing. This was a fundraiser in L.A. a few years ago where he was accepting some humanitarian award for his, for his work. And, you know, he was accepting the award and he was giving thanks and it was feeling definitely, definitely filled with gratitude. And then the back, just, oh, just that contentment, you know, that zen that you get in when you paint. And I didn't want to give it up, you know, and I was always starting to make a good living. And I realized, hey, this is really what I'm supposed to be doing. The other was just kind of a platform to get me there. And, you know, all the training, all the goal setting, all that kind of stuff that comes from sports, I've kind of just taken that into the art field. You know, it's kind of like get up in the morning, set a goal, get it done and do it. So. Because I heard it was pretty impressive when people see you um, painting, oh, painting this, the energy yeah. that you're moving. Again, it's just one of those things I just, you know, my whole story began with live on stage with Carlos Santana in Las Vegas in front of about 120.